Thank you for joining us. Today's video is going to be just a little different. We are going to wear, rework an indoor succulent centerpiece or arrangement. And what I want to do today is show you an arrangement that I've had in the house for maybe about two years, maybe a little more than that. And these plants do well in medium, even to low light situations. Some of our rosettes and some of the other succulents you bring indoors, if you are not giving them enough light, they will exfoliate and stretch toward the light. And that just changes the way they look completely. And I'll show you one that I totally neglected that was not getting enough light. And so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. But these plants, if they don't have proper light, they still seem to be just fine. So these are gonna work really well indoors. And these will also work outdoors. If you wanna put this arrangement out on a patio table, you can do something like that. It's just pretty, they're pretty easy plants. Um, I'm working with a Haworthia, the zebra plant, a domino cactus, gasteria, just a few very easy, easy to grow plants. And they're all succulents and cacti. So I will bring you overhead while we work on those and let you see exactly how I rework this arrangement. And it's not my usual farmhouse decor look. Sort of changed it up and put some crystals in there. So sometimes we want to step outside of our comfort zone and just change it up a little. So that's what we did here. You may want to subscribe if you have not already done so, and you also may want to hit that bell notification, and that will let you know when I upload new videos. We'll bring you overhead and let's get to work. But when a succulent that requires lots of light is not getting enough light, it will stretch towards the light and become etoliated like this stretched out gal. This should just be a normal topsy-turvy. But instead, <laughs> we have this crazy stretched out succulent. I may be able to cut that top off let it callus over for about a week and then stick it in soil, but I'm not sure. She might be too far gone. Uh, and then the leaves might be, I can't remember if the topsy-turvy is easy to propagate from leaves, but I have so many of them. But I just wanted to show you, this is real life. The things we show on social media are just how things are when everything's peachy keen and beautiful. And when we want to put our best foot forward. And real life is this stretched out succulent that I put in a place with it that did not have proper light. And I left her there and forgot about her. So that's what happens, that's the way it goes. But I wanted to give you a gander. That is why I wanna work with the succulents that I've brought in that are happy to be in the low or medium light indoors and don't stretch or give me any grief. For that sitch. So we'll put these two Haworthia back in. The only problem I have with these is it may have got too cool in here with the air conditioning and their snips. And the tips on some have dried out a little, so I just <laughs> clip off those little tips. that are super brittle and she's still good to go. So we want, she's got nice roots, really big roots, which they don't need huge roots. Your indoor succulents definitely don't need huge roots, but she's already got really nice roots. So we are going to keep those going. We'll put three, if I have five of those little guys, I'd like to just work around that back corner. That'd be nice. So I do have five of them. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna stick five around that back corner and then we will, and I don't know if you can see me here, I'm doing the same thing to these little guys. They, if they've got dry tips, I'm just clipping off only the dry section. I'm not even getting into the healthy, fleshy section of the plant. I'm just clipping off what is dry. And then I'll get those roots. 
tucked deep into that soil. That's one, two, three, whoops, how many do I have here? One, two, three, four. <laughs> I've been spending time with my great niece who is about to turn two and we work on counting everything. Whatever it is we're looking at, whatever it is we're playing with, we're always counting. So, <laughs> sorry if I sound like a preschool teacher. But, that's what we're doing. We're getting five of those in. I always like to work in odd numbers. It just, it's more visually appealing to the eye. So, we didn't want to put two in or four in. We want to do either three, one, three, or five. So, that's our five. And then, I'm not sure if I want to use these columnar Haworthia, or if I want to keep this low, but I do love, let's see, I don't want you to get too much soil on you. I'll get a little brush to dust this off, but I do love this little domino cactus, so we'll put her back down, and you can sort of do the same thing with a domino cactus that you do with like your Echeveria where you sort of tilt them just so that you like the way it looks or you can build up your soil and get it, you can see some exposed roots. You can build your soil up and get it standing nice and tall. I'm gonna add a bit more soil. I like to air on, I need to add soil as opposed to, uh oh, I've now got too much soil. So, let's see, I've got a couple of those small Haworthia. I'd like to put my Gastera in, but I think it's going to be so much taller than the things behind it, but hopefully it's okay. I like that plant. She's happy, and she just looks great. I've got some of her roots kicked up here. So I'm pushing them down and just getting soil on top of those gals. And the soil that I'm working with, it's not... Let me pull her out. I'm going to pull that out because I think I've got some soil between leaves. And I think I want it to show this side as the front. too much prematurely. I'm just going to work that lower into the soil. Get all of these roots down. You need the roots covered or you need to clip them and get the ends of those roots taken care of. I've got a mess going but I've got three here of this type of Haworthia, and that is the type that will grow stacked taller in this columnar form, sort of like this gal. Uh, these will stack that way, and they're just really small still. I've got five of these zebra type Haworthia in the back. I put one Gasteria in the middle, and then I've got this domino cactus, and I think that might be about all that I'm doing because I still want to leave room to put my crystals and rocks and all that good stuff around. Let's sprinkle some of these around the front. We may not be able to get every area that we want to, but 
least this far, this front area, it's going to have a good sprinkling of those rocks. So we got most of the silver back on top. I think that's pretty cute. I Obviously, it's not completely covered up, but we are also going to, whoops, we are also going to get in here pretty tight with some crystals. So let's put some of our little geode pieces and crystals back up and just stick those anywhere we think they're going to look good. They're gonna cover up a bunch of our bare areas. to arrange those or to get those set up. You could have them too. Okay, sit down and be nice. Everybody sit down. We're, not, we're never kissing on the lips. Get that out of your head. Thank you guys for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it inspires you to maybe rework some of your succulent arrangements for indoors uh, and just change them up a little. Change the style if you feel like it. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this one. We will see you later. No kissing on the mouth. No kissing on the mouth. <laughs>